Hey guys, I just got back from the Asian Oceana Congress on Neuroradiology. We had a 20 minute invited talk there. So we're gonna be separating that into three parts on this channel so that we can keep bite-sized content in how radiology works. So today we're gonna to be talking about the first part, namely for neuro CT imaging, what are the different types of exams and where are the different factors that are critical to making sure that each of those types of exams gives the best image quality for the patients. So that's coming up here at How Radiology Works. If that kind of information sounds good to you, click below on subscribe and click on that little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. Really appreciate your time. I'm Brian Nett. I'm an employee of G Healthcare and a sole proprietor of HowRadiologyWorks.com, which is a website to help you learn more about the physics of how radiology works. A lot of the material I'm gonna be presenting today actually comes from the white paper right here. So this is a GE white paper. If you wanna hit that QR code, you can see more details about true fidelity. What we're gonna go through here first is how do we get good data that's gonna be input for our algorithm development? We're gonna talk about for head CT scanning, what's the best CT platform to acquire the data so that we can best have data to train our models and use as input to our models. So we're gonna talk about the different applications for head scanning. First off, a routine head scan. The most important aspect there, obviously, is the low contrast detectability and the gray-white matter differentiation is really driven by how well we can differentiate low contrast objects because gray and white matter have attenuation differences which are less than 1%. Additionally, we're talking about the thickest bone in the body, most dense bone in the body there. And in the posterior fossa, we typically have significant beam hardening artifacts as well as other areas in the brain. You can see that those artifacts are significant in the no correction case. They're even present in the case of the state of the art of 15 to 20 years ago, which is an image-based correction. And in a full multi-material correction, which does a full model of the forward projection through multiple materials, which can generate these second order beam hardening artifacts, you can see there's significant reduction in those beam hardening artifacts. Another area that is of concern, not all the time, but can be of concern in some cases for routine heads is the presence of motion. We'll be getting to that more later and talk about how we can improve these motion artifacts in brain CT, but that's one aspect of the imaging. Inner auditory canal or inner ear imaging is another task wherein the most important metric there is actually the spatial resolution. The high contrast spatial resolution, it also needs to be isotropic spatial resolution because we want to cut in any plane and want to have isotropic resolution there. Perfusion is very important for early identification of ischemic strokes, for instance. In perfusion applications, we want fast imaging and we need coverage because we don't want to have to shuttle the system back and forth We'd like to be able to park the system and repeat the scan so that we can have repeatable data acquired quickly. Finally, CTA. A lot of times we're talking about a routine head, a perfusion, and CTAs all occurring at once. There's additionally an option now to do CTAs in place of a perfusion exam. If we do multiple CTAs at different time points, that can have significant diagnostic value as well. So we need to have reproducibility of our values and we need to be fast. Additionally, we, we can use the fact that if we have more MA at lower KVPs on these types of exams, that's gonna help with our iodine contrast because iodine contrast goes up for the lower KVPs. So if we talk about the union of all of these things, we want all of these things. It's actually gonna be a wide coverage, fast scanner, which is what we're gonna need in order to do the best head scanning. Here's an example of one of these. This is the Revolution Apex and Revolution CT that I work on. We're gonna to switch to, for these different types of applications, 
we can characterize how they do as well as far as high contrast space resolution and then low contrast resolution. So those are significantly different tasks and the most common tasks actually in the clinic are right in here of routine head of angio where the low contrast resolution is very important 